Well, as fuel and oil prices plummet, so are airfares, but not necessarily as much as some say they should be. Right now, the average domestic airfare for the September through November period is supposed to be 3.6% cheaper than it was during the fall of last year, and 8.1% cheaper than in the same time in the same three months in 2013. One of the key reasons airlines can keep domestic fares low is that the industry's biggest expense, fuel, has dropped about 30% over the last year. Given that, critics say the decline in fares should be much bigger, but we're not getting it. So talking to us about this, Gary Leff is a blogger for a View from the Wing and co-founder of the Mile Point Frequent Flyer Community. And Ben Schlappig, travel consultant blogger and one mile at a time founder, frequently talked to us about these fares. It's nice to have you both back. Ben, I'd like to read you a quote uh, from the New York Times from a passenger who travels a lot, and he says this, as far as I'm concerned, it's all a ripoff. Fuel costs have now come down, and the rates haven't come down. He's talking about plane prices. Is that true, Ben? Are we all getting ripped off? Hi, Jenna. I think uh, for the most part, that's probably not true. I think it's important to understand what impacts the cost of airfare. So the cost of airfare is really driven by supply and demand and not the cost of uh, actually uh, you know, flying planes. So, for example, during the recession, uh, the airlines were losing hundreds of millions of dollars uh, because they couldn't raise the fares. The market just wouldn't support that. So nowadays, the economy has recovered a bit. Yes, fuel is lower, but uh, finally, the airlines can turn a bit of profit. Well, that's interesting, Gary, because I'm seeing that other th this theory as well, meaning that we're paying less to gas up our cars, and so we have more money in our pockets. So that means we're more willing to spend a little bit more to travel, and therefore we're not getting the benefits of the low fuel prices when it comes to air travel. Is that really what's going on? Well, you know, we are seeing the benefits of low fuel prices, or at least we're beginning to. What we have to understand is that fuel prices have been low for a little while, and it takes a, quite a while for airlines to become that much more competitive. Um, it takes a while to get more aircraft. Aircraft are expensive, 80, 90 million even for a single aisle jet. Uh, it takes time to get more gates and put more planes in the air. And as they become more competitive, that's when we see prices fall, because again, it is just supply and demand. More flights in the skies and uh, uh, you know, they'll, they'll lower prices in order to fill the seats. So what we're going to see is a lot more competition. We're seeing it in markets like Dallas, where Southwest has really ramped up at Love Field now that it's legal for them to do so. We've seen that in Seattle, where Delta is going after Alaska Airlines. And we're seeing that on flights to Europe, where United is going to be putting larger planes on their routes uh, out of Newark. Well, so, Ben, where are the statistics coming that we should be seeing lower ticket prices? I mean, where are the ticket prices visibly lower if you're traveling domestically? Yes, yeah, so for now, the differences aren't going to be huge. We're talking a few percent, and that's something that's really hard to kind of comparison shop now versus a year ago. I would say we will see some great fares this fall, and really the best time to book that potentially would be in August. Um, kind of Labor Day is kind of the cutoff point between summer travel and fall travel. Um, so if you can kind of get in and book your airfare in late August, you'll probably get uh, great deals for this fall. Is that, is that also what you're seeing, Gary? I'd like to ask you about the tips as well. It's always good to get some free advice <laughs> about when to book your travel. Is that, uh, is that what you see book next few weeks for late fall travel and get some good prices? I mean, that's roughly actually right. Um, what you want to be doing is being about 60 to 90 days out for leisure travel, although a little bit farther out when you're talking about the heavy holiday periods. But to me, the most important thing to know is what a ticket to your destination usually costs. And then if it's less expensive than that, it's a good time to buy. And if it's more expensive, but you're still far out, then you want to wait and not jump. So, you know, figure out how current pricing compares to normal, and then you can be able to be well positioned to spot a deal. Do a little homework. I think that sounds pretty good. Gary, before I let you go too, and I'm going to have to wrap up here, but I have to ask you, last time we were, we were all talking, we were talking about the potential collusion and prices for airlines and how few uh, carriers are out there because some big carriers are really dominating the market. What is the latest on the collusion case? Does that have any, any, any impact as you've seen um, as far as the way the carriers are behaving? Well, Jenna, I think uh, the, any sort of c uh, case from the Department of Justice is going to take quite some time to play out. Uh, it's not really going to have any effect on airfares. It's unlikely to be a significant development because, of course, airlines have not been able to significantly raise prices. Prices are falling. That's not what you would expect to see in a collusive environment. But the truth is that that's not going to be a prime driver of airline prices. If you really want to see um, lower fares, what you want is more competition. And the way you get more competition is by 
removing barriers that prevent more airlines from competing. You could easily open up the U.S. markets to have uh, international airlines uh, flying within the U.S., and you'd have Singapore Airlines, Lufthansa, uh, perhaps Ryanair uh, flying. More airlines would mean uh, cheaper fares. It's interesting. It's an interesting idea and probably a, a good idea for another segment as well. Ben, Gary, great to have you both. We appreciate your expertise and encourage our viewers to check out your blogs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate Thanks, it.